everyone, and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in this video, we will tell you all of the latest news about our projects, as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Well, hell, the last saga has launched on Kickstarter. We are now on day two, and your support has been amazing. The game funded in less than 15 minutes, and it's still going strong, continuing to unlock even more stretch goals. Hell the Last Saga is a Viking fantasy cooperative narrative adventure with for one to four players. Players will lead the 13 heroes of those who are the Peregrines clan and help them survive the horrors that litter their journey through a narrative experience that will haunt your dreams. Hell the Last Saga is a unique and exceptional product. As such, we've decided not to sell it in a usual fashion with a core box to be completed with optional expansions. But rather, we're putting everything together in one huge box containing absolutely everything you need to play. Everything is in there, all the stories, all the elements of the game, all the gameplay. It's advertised as an all-in gameplay because that's exactly what it is. You get everything you need to play in one box. The Berserk Pledge comes at $129 and includes a massive number of components. 111 minis, over 500 cards, more than 50 tiles, including a game board, and a bunch of mystery boxes. And all this doesn't include the stretch goals that will be unlocked. So go ahead and check out our Kickstarter pledge because this will be your only chance to get the game. This is a Kickstarter exclusive campaign. On to Joan of Arc. Last time we shared with you the updated rulebook. And after sharing it, our developers have been scouting the Kickstarter comments, social media groups, as well as our Discord channel to check your feedback. A few additional issues have been noted will be resolved and re-implemented, including some of the changes in the fire for the battle mode. Since last week, we've been focusing on finalizing the scenario books of the already existing expansions. Our development team has been checking and proofreading them and are currently laying them out. Since progress in layout has been made only in one language, we're going to refrain from sharing until we have completed both language versions. We are prioritizing the Reliquary, Ars Nova, and Apocalypse scenario books, and we are working on sharing these with you next week. Moving on to Solomon Kane, these past few weeks we've shared with you the prototype of the Puritan Pledge. Now, if you recall, this was not a copy from the factory, but from a local printing company. The game is currently awaiting in line to be produced. For now, the factory hasn't informed us of any delays on our scheduled date to begin production of Solomon Kane. Should anything pop up, we will of course keep you informed. Now let's get back to our story. We left Solomon Kane in the Moon of Skulls. Specifically, he was being surrounded by Nakari warriors and requesting to meet their queen. Now, we're not going to tell you exactly what happens in between because we want to leave that for you to discover. But Solomon is now in the Hills of the Dead, and these hills can only be full of threats. Well, what happened with the queen? Did he manage to leave the Nakari camp? Are her warriors pursuing him? Somewhat at a loss as how to proceed, Solomon Cain draws flint and steel from his belt and strikes them to some tinder to light a torch warily shielding the light with his hands. Upon searching his surroundings, he finds an entrance to what appears to be a cavern, a large cavern out of which bellows a horrid smell. What could Solomon encounter in this cavern? Where could it lead? Stay tuned, and we'll take a closer look at the third and final act of the Moon of Skulls in our next update. Moving along to Reichbusters, the time has come to share more things with you. Our team has been working very hard these past few weeks, and now we are very happy to inform you that we have the FAQ and errata for the game ready to go. As always, you can find the link for both languages in the video description below, as well as in the Kickstarter update. 
The FAQ is a summary of all the questions that you have been sending us, and it is meant to help you clear up some ambiguities with regards to the rules for Reichbusters. The errata includes the new text that should be implemented in some of the cards in the game. Now, with regards to shipping, here's a detailed summary of what is happening with the remaining packages in Europe and the rest of the world. First, in France, 967 packages were sent from a total of 1,004. This leaves another 13 unverified addresses to have their pledges filled. In Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Luxembourg, 489 packages were sent out of the 784. In the Shenzhen area and the United Kingdom, 428 packages were sent out of the 1,647. And finally, rest of the world is scheduled to open on Monday, May 18th, for delivery of the 41 orders that fell into that category of shipment. And we will, of course, keep you informed in the next What's Up Wednesday for progress in that region. Please note that out of the 3,476 orders in Europe and the rest of the world, only 88% of the backers have verified their addresses. So please, once more, make sure that you check your spam folder for, the, for, for that verification email. Finally, we would like to make a shout out to Dieter Krombitz, uh, a dedicated fan of Reichbusters who took his passion for the game to the next level and created a website only for Reichbusters. Reichbusters.com is the home of an open source map editor where you can create your own raids or campaigns for the game. Furthermore, you can find custom heroes who can now be a part of the Reichbusters universe. And of course, solo campaigns and more missions. We are very humbled and proud to see our fans creating all of this additional content for the game, and we certainly hope that you enjoy it. Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, we do have some news from the factory. Phase one of the production has now finished, and we are super happy to share pictures from the factory. This includes the printing of all of the plastic components, so mainly just the minis and the plastic tokens. As you know, this took longer than initially expected because of the coronavirus outbreak. Here's a status update with regards to how the factory works now. Capacity is still not at 100%. Employees are asked to wear masks, which they change twice a day. They are also requested to stand two meters apart from each other so that they can respect social distancing rules. They take breaks more often in order to have their temperatures taken, and they also have shorter shifts. As you can understand, all these things have added up to a delay in the production, and they are going to continue to impact production in its second phase. Now, in phase two, which we are now entering, we move on to printing all of the print material, including cards, boards, and rule books. Normally, we would be able to provide an accurate estimate for its completion, but at this time, we cannot know exactly when this phase will end. The initial plan was after the measures were lifted to hire temporary staff who would help speed up production. This is currently not possible but we don't know if it will be possible in the future as things change daily. Furthermore, in order to speed up the delivery process, we have made the decision to package everything from your orders in the factory in China. This means that packing will not take place in the individual hubs, which are currently operating with a smaller percentage of staff than the factory in China. And thus, this will hopefully speed up the delivery of the games. When the games ship from China and reach the hubs, the hubs will simply be responsible to get the games to you. The game is still in line for summer delivery as it was planned. Uh, we will keep you informed, of course, every step of the way. Finally, please remember that Super Fantasy Brawl gets a bi-weekly update, so we'll get back to you in two weeks unless we have some urgent news that needs to be addressed specifically. And since we've been showing you pictures of what has already been produced, let's do a quiz. How many miniatures do you think are on this table? Go ahead and put your answer in the comments below. For Enchanter's East Quest, we have a different kind of update today. 
Up to now, we've been discussing about the lore behind the different kingdom decks and how they work. But it's now time to talk about the development of the game. And we're happy to announce that the first phase of development is now complete. This means that all the files have been handed in to us by our great partners at Jindy. Now this goes for all existing files, as well as the EastQuest files. We're now in the proof reading phase of all documents. Furthermore, the translation of the core game and existing expansions has also been done in French. So this includes everything but the files for EastQuest. After proofreading all the documents, we will move into translation of the EastQuest and some further playtesting. And we're very happy that everything is moving according to plan and with how far and how fast everything has moved up until now. At this point, we need to tell you that we will be switching Enchanters to bi-weekly updates. We will keep you informed for everything that is happening, but the proofing and translating part is less thrilling and juicy. So we'll have less things to share with you in the meantime. Whenever we do have files to share with you, we will do so, even if it's sooner than a scheduled update. The Steam Watchers team continues to work on the project, going through all of the text and designs to ensure that there is no gameplay conflict and that all game terms are consistent. Yes, <laughs> this is tedious, but it's absolutely important. We want the game to flow smoothly with as few inconsistency as possible, conveying as much flavor as possible. We're not locking every single piece of content since we want to test everything more. I'll give you examples with the leader equipment from the Fuel for War expansion. The Belrafon rockets from the Catabatians and the Hollow Preacher from the High Glimmer Apostles. As a reminder, these equipment cards are acquired every round of the game that you choose to keep your leader in the Conclave and bully the weaker ambassadors that come in their stead when they go to the battlefield. The Belrafon rockets say this, whenever your leader defends and loses a fight, no units are lost. Troops may retreat on an adjacent free area instead of retreating normally. Now, these rockets are not about actively wanting to lose a fight, but they're all about de-incentivizing an enemy attack. As it is restricted to one area, however, you will be able to exploit other Catabatian weaknesses and openings. Also note that these powers might come with a strength increase, further enhancing your leader. Now, with the Hollow Preacher, it reads, As long as your leader is on the Conclave track, when you use the Convert ability of your idols, convert up to two soldiers instead of one. But you must still obey the occupation limit of the area. Some powers like this one actually want your leaders to stay in the Conclave. This means that you're sacrificing an awesome unit on the battlefield, granted, but the added benefit might just be worth it. The High Glimmer Apostles are not known for their subtlety, and that blatant, flashy display of power will certainly draw some attention. If everyone considers you as a threat, maybe you're in for a tough ride. So as a quick reminder, the Pledge Manager is open still until May 29th, so you can still join the fun, or you just need to make sure that you complete your pledge by then. Finally, our second riddle. What does this MS Paint beauty actually mean? Well, here's the answer. It is a scrapped idea of an Archon card ability that specifically used leaders. Units can move into an empty area that was decoyed when planning orders then swap that decoy token for a move or defense order token from your supply. If your leader is in these units, you may immediately activate that order. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.